the United States is one out of 193 countries in the United Nations and yet we pay 22% of the entire budget and more. In fact, we pay far more than anybody realizes. The United States bears an unfair cost burden. But to be fair, if it could actually accomplish all of its stated goals, especially the goal of peace, this investment would easily be well worth it. Major portions of the world are in conflict and some, in fact, are going to hell. But the powerful people in this room, under the guidance and auspicious of the United Nations, can solve many of these vicious and complex problems. The American people hope that one day soon, the United Nations can be a much more accountable and effective advocate for human dignity and freedom around the world. In the meantime, we believe that no nation should have to bear a disproportionate share of the burden. Militarily or financially, nations of the world must take a greater role in promoting secure and prosperous societies in their own region. We are fortunate to have incredibly strong and healthy trade relationships with many of the Latin American countries gathered here today. Our economic bond forms a critical foundation for advancing peace and prosperity for all of our people and all of our neighbors. I ask every country represented here today to be prepared to do more to address this very real crisis. Wherever true socialism or communism has been adopted, it has delivered anguish and devastation and failure. Those who preach the tenets of these discredited ideologies only contribute to the continued suffering of the people who live under these cruel systems. America stands with every person living under a brutal regime. Our respect for sovereignty is also a call for action. All people deserve a government that cares for their safety, their interests and their well-being, including their prosperity. In America, we seek stronger ties of business and trade with all nations of goodwill. But this trade must be fair and it must be reciprocal. For too long, the American people were told that mammoth multinational trade deals, unaccountable international tribunals and powerful global bureaucracies were the best way to promote their success. But as those promises flowed, millions of jobs vanished and thousands of factories disappeared. Others gamed the system and broke the rules. And our great middle class, once the bedrock of American prosperity, was forgotten and left behind. But they are forgotten no more and they will never be forgotten again. While America will pursue cooperation and commerce with other nations, we are renewing our commitment to the first duty of every government, the duty of our citizens. This bond is the source of America's strength and that of every responsible nation represented here today. If we are to embrace the opportunities of the future and overcome the present dangers together, there can be no substantive for strong, sovereign and independent nations. Nations that are rooted in the histories and invested in their destiny. Nations that seek allies to befriend, not enemies to conquer. And most important of all, nations that are home to men and women who are willing to sacrifice for their countries, their fellow citizens and for all that is best in the human spirit. Today, if we do not invest ourselves, our hearts, our minds and our nations, if we will not build strong families, safe communities and healthy societies for ourselves, no one can do it for us. This is the ancient wish of every people and the deepest yearning that lives inside every sacred soul. So, let this be our mission and let this be our message to the world. We will fight together, sacrifice together and stand together for peace, for freedom, for justice, for family, for humanity and for the Almighty God who made us all. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the nations of the world. God bless the United Nations of America. Thank you very much.